Hello everyone. We are group 13 for the capstone project. Uh, I am a generator, Sarthak Bhardwaj. Uh, I will be giving this presentation along with one of the solvers, Sudarshan Gupta. So the idea uh, from where we derived our problem is this. Uh, we saw that underwater vehicles experience heating up of their enclosures, which houses electrical components like the CPU and GPU. These components generate a high amount of heat energy. Currently to curb this problem, the standard uh, solution is the fan and heat sink method, which is used. This method uh, is proved to be inefficient when the vehicles are operated for longer durations, as we'll soon see. The aim of this project is to optimize the current heat dissipation system using a, a concept that is not currently used widely. It's known as the two-phase immersion cooling concept, and it is used. Uh, uh, it is we are trying to use it here as a suitable replacement. This will make the heat dissipation more efficient and will facilitate longer operation hours and reduce damage and failure to these machines. Uh, as you can see below, the image is of the traditional fan and heat sinks uh, cooling system. A little about the two-phase immersion cooling system. This is, uh, I will try to give a very broad idea as to what, what the concept is inherently. Uh, so basically, electrical components are submerged into a bath of dielectric heat transfer liquid. Uh, as you can see in the image, the green part, the green figure is the, are, the, are the components that are immersed into the liquid uh, and the process starts. Uh, having a These uh, liquids generally have a low boiling point and the vapor that are subsequently generated due to the heat of the component passively take care of the heat transfer. Okay, uh, so the model that uh, inspired us essentially to use the two-phase immersion cooling is this. Some of the big data centers, uh, uh, although quite rare, use this technique to keep the optimum temperature of the processing units under check. Uh, as you can see in this video, uh, uh, the the electrical components are submerged in a bath and uh, the tubes that you can see above are the copper tubes, the cooling tubes. Uh, these are spiral tubes uh, that are present to facilitate cooling. Uh, yeah, as you can see, vapors are rising because uh, of the liquid due to the heat that, have been that has been transferred through the components to the liquid. Hmm. To uh, have a better sense of understanding to, uh, as to how we can apply this concept, uh, our team developed a CAD model of the enclosure to try and understand how the concept of double phase immersion cooling could be applied. Here. We then used uh, standard heat transfer equations to understand and compare the efficiency provided by the traditional fan and heat sink system and that provided by the double phase immersion cooling system. The calculations for the same were performed using programming software called MATLAB. Uh, through our analysis, we were successfully able to conclude that the double phase immersion cooling provide, did indeed provide a better and more efficient mechanism for heat dissipation than the traditionally used fan and heatsink system. The temperature of the enclosure did not rise above its optimum level, unlike in the case of fan and heatsink mechanism. Uh, to have a better sense as to why this concept is necessary, let's have a look at the literature that was published by the AUV team of IIT Bombay. Uh, the so the enclosures which contain the electrical component are completely sealed as they should be waterproofed as the uh, AUV, that is uh, uh, Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, uh, works in, in water, as the name suggests. So heat generated from them gets distributed heat generated uh, from the enclosure gets distributed over a whole enclosure by fan and heat sink. Uh, as we will see in the video, as you can see, the central chip is the inception point of the heat, which then gets uh, starts distributing throughout the enclosure. Uh, only a limited amount gets dissipated through enclosure walls by conduction. Uh, finally, the result showed that the maximum temperature crossed the 100 degrees Celsius mark. This is particularly harmful for the enclosure as uh, there are many heat sensitive components uh, present in it, uh, which can be damaged due to such a high temperature. This is our autonomous underwater vehicle of our college, Matsya, which has been developed by AUV, IIT Bombay. <clears throat> As you can see, the central uh, box sort of situation that we have here is the enclosure. This is waterproof and it houses all the components. And th that is our control volume for this project. Uh, 
in order to make the calculation easier for us we have used a simplified schematic for the enclosure present in the other water vehicles as as uh, the right image uh, this contains only three major components the pump that is apart from the enclosure of course the green pump that is outside of the box this controls the inflow and outflow of the sea water that that is used as a coolant the the coiled pipe that is uh, present so the pipe is coiled to increase the surface area for convection uh, and finally the central uh, processing unit and the general processing unit along with motherboard that has been indicated by the light green uh, box that is present below the pipe on the left side uh, i would just like to point out is the actual enclosure of the of of matsya the enclosure as you can see is very complicated with a lot of uh, parts so to simplify this we have used uh, a simplified uh, cad model now sudarshan will be taking over and explaining the concept okay. <clears throat> so this is the schematic along with the heat flux is shown so here in the bottom we had the motherboard and the cpu and gpu chips are uh, attached to it and then there is a novex 649 liquid up to there and uh, the heat is produ uh, produced by the cpu and gpu chips and is transferred to the novex 649 liquid and when it the temperature of the liquid reaches at its boiling temperature then it is starts to evaporate then it is strikes the this uh, spiral copper pipe that is being used for the uh, uh, as a for co cooling the novex 649 uh, vapor so the coolant that is the sea water is flowing through it and uh, you can see that Uh, these are the uh, various heat fluxes shown here uh, and the outer wall is the insulated aluminum compartment wall uh, we have made the assumption insulated and later we will show why we have done did this assumption so all the possible heat transfer processes uh, in the left one uh, the control volume one is the novex liquid and here we have shown all the heat fluxes Uh, that are taking place through the novex liquid and uh, in the right side we have the r control volume 2 which is novex vapor and uh, control volume 3 which is spiral pipe spiral copper pipe and uh, here also we have seen uh, shown all the heat fluxes that are taking place through in and out of the uh, control volume okay so moving on to the problem statement so uh, in the problem we have given the uh, this is the aluminum enclosure its dimensions are given and the thickness uh, of the wall is given and the gpu and cpu chips are generating a power maximum power of 177 watts and then there is a novex fluid which is filled up to the height of 60 mm with the dielectric fluid novex whose properties are also given and the remaining of uh, the enclosure is fitted with the this coiled copper pipe through which the coolant is flowing in and out which is help in condensation of the novex vapor back to it and finally we have to find the rate of vaporization of novex liquid rate of condensation of novex vapor and finally effective heat that will be removed from the compartment which is our main goal of the project okay so in this we are uh, Uh, approximate we have done approximate estimate using network based approach so we have considered the many assumptions to find this approximate estimate and later we will uh, find the values of these neglected uh, heat uh, transfer processes and we'll show how why we neglected them so here uh, in the right side it's the uh, network shown here uh, this is the r1 which corresponds to the convection from the inner surface of the pipe to the water uh, that is coolant flowing through the pipe then there is a conduction between the uh, outer surface and inner surface of the pipe then there is a conduction from uh, novex vapor to out outer surface of pipe so uh, here we have mentioned r1 which corresponds to the convection as we so as we have, i have told uh, r2 corresponds to conduction and r3 corresponds to convection so we have find the rate of evaporation and rate of condensation along with the q out that we are able the amount of it that we are able to extract so moving to the ignored modes of heat transfer the, the uh, we have listed all the modes of heat transfer that we have uh, that we have ignored in our uh, subsequent final model and uh, the, as, as you as we have shown that uh, our compartment wall is insulated so giving reason to for that you can see that vapor to walls through conduction uh, the the heat trans heat transfer value is 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो एट सेवन फाइव एंड वेपर टू वॉल्स थ्रू रेडिएशन इज वेरी लो एज एज यू कैन सी सो वी हैव सो आर एजम्सन इज जस्टिफाइड एयर सो द वैल्यूज कैलकुलेटेड आर वेरी कैम टू बी वेरी लो एज कम्पेयर टू अदर मेजर वन एंड वी सब्सिक्वेंटली नेग्लेक्टेड ओके तो मूविंग ऑन टू द टेम्परेचर प्रोफाइल इन द राइट साइड दे इज अमेटिक ऑफ आर कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम and in the left side there is a temperature was is y axis uh, so coming to the tv tv is the boiling temperature of the novec uh, liquid so there is a convection from novec vapor to the outer surface of the pipe then there is a conduction through outer surface to inner surface of pipe and finally there is a convection through water that is coolant doing this Okay. Equations used. So we have used the generic generic one D equations for the convection, conduction, and radiation that we have also did earlier. Uh, and equation of the specific heat. And these are the assumptions. We uh, after uh, calculating and ignoring all the uh, heat transfer process, we have came to these assumptions for our fine model. So this the compartment wall is isothermal. Inner and outer surface of the pipe are isothermal. heat generation is uniform and temperature is uniformly distributed in the novec liquid and we also neglect all the contact resistance any between any two surfaces so expressions for unknowns so just give you a one example how we calculated the heat transfer so we have i have taken the example of uh, heat transfer from vapor to outer surface of a spiral pipe d is the length scale its value is given here and yeah this formula uh, this is the nusselt number Uh, which gives us the uh, convective heat transfer from there we can find the actual q double s and that is the heat transfer okay. so this is the these are the prandtl number sl number grassoff number and dinovitz number these are the dimensions dimensionless number and we use this to find out the different heat transfer process value of the different heat transfer processes and this is the length scale as we have shown i have shown in the previous slide okay so moving on to the solution value final uh, we have find the rate of vaporization of novec liquid condensation of novec vapor and the effective heat that will be removed from the compartment as was asked in the problem statement so in the left this graph is given for the temperature of novec liquid was it time how it uh, rises from initial temperature to its final boiling point temperature and in the right side it's given rate of heat transferred from novec liquid to walls versus time so this is also a somewhat linear graph we can say okay uh, handing over to sathav uh okay so uh, we could after our project analysis we could fairly conclude that the rate of heat that can be removed from the system by this immersion cooling method which we have worked on is much greater than the rate of heat that is generated by the cpu chips so cpu chip temperature and the enclosure temperature can be maintained at the optimum level so we can conclude that the immersion cooling method is in fact more efficient than the traditional ones uh, traditional fan and heat sink mechanism used we could also infer that the heat dissipation rate depends on various parameters such as length inner and outer diameters of the coolant tube and the velocity of water flowing through it heat dissipation rate is also directly proportional to the surface area of the coolant tube and the velocity of water according to the findings of this report if the concept of double phase immersion cooling is applied a more efficient model of heat dissipation can be made which helps us sustain the optimal temperature in underwater vehicles for longer periods of time uh okay uh, a little comment on the assumptions here all the assumptions and simplifications made by us were done to create uniformity to ensure easy calculations if we do not take these assumptions and try to find out the true value using numerical analysis and simulation softwares the values so obtained would be more accurate but would not deviate much from our presently concluded value so uh we felt that this was a fair trade off and decided to estimate in the uh, in the mentioned manner scope uh, the scope for improvement in the current model is that while uh, it is more efficient in heat dissipation than the existing traditional models it is economically less viable we can try to find out ways to make this model economically more feasible which would enhance the durability of the underwater vehicles and promote a longer shelf life at a similar cost 
if we are able to achieve that we have uh, uh, we can have a look at a very bright future in this field the original concept of double phase immersion cooling is used in big data companies to cool their heavy processing units we have tried to scale down this model and apply it to solve a similar problem that exists in underwater vehicles if we are able to further scale down this model and make it more cost efficient the fan and heat sink models would become obsolete and this model could find its use in various day to day appliances like computers inverters etc we generally feel this would be quite revolutionary having uh, having said that we have reached at the end of our presentation i hope we were able to impart some knowledge that we gained through this project uh thank you for listening to us